everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the Abigail Baby Blanket. This design is actually named for another shawl using the same stitches right here on the Bonnie Bay Crochet YouTube channel. And this particular design, it's an intermediate design and I chose some yarn I'm going to show you in just a minute and it's totally self-striping. You only need two cakes of it and it features just regular double crochet, the arrow stitch, and the Celtic weave, and I end with an eyelet trim. And I'm very, very thrilled with the way this came out. And I just want to thank those crocheters who encouraged me to make this blanket. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using two cakes of Lion Brand Yarns Mandala Baby Yarn. And let me give you some stats on this. Each of these cakes has 5.3 ounces or 150 grams, 590 yards or 540 meters each. And this is a 100% acrylic. And just take note that this is a number three weight yarn. It's a little bit thinner than the yarn that you may be accustomed to if you mostly use worsted weight. Okay, now you can use worsted weight yarn on this project should you choose to. Just make sure you upsize your hook from what I'm going to show you. And just to give you an idea of the colorway of this beautiful yarn, and let's see, does this colorway have a name? It does. It's right there. Is it Diagon Alley? All right, so let me go ahead and show you the hook that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I'm recommending that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. To begin, we will make our slip knot and a chain four. Once we make the chain, we're going to make a slip stitch in that very first chain and we have a very small loop. Go ahead and chain two and for the record this does not count as a double crochet but we're going to work 18 double crochets worked right into the center of this small circle or small loop. And also notice that as I work this, I'm going to be working over the loose strand. This is just an excellent way to hide this while you can. So I'm going to go ahead and finish making these 18 double crochets. Okay, now that I have 18 double crochets, and do take the time to count to be sure that you have exactly 18. That's very important for the math going forward on this particular design. Now we're going to join with a slip stitch to that very first stitch of the round. Chain two. And now we are going to work two double crochets in the same place as joining. And we're going to work two double crochets in every stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, we should have a total of 36 double crochets and again be sure that you take the time to count to be sure that we have that many stitches. Also I'm going to go ahead and trim this very carefully so that that strand is no longer a problem and it is well hidden under those 18 double crochets. So go ahead and finish working two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, we join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And just again, as a reminder, this chain two does not count as a stitch. Okay, now we are ready to go on to round number four. And round number four is where we change our circle into a square. We're going to chain two, add in the very first space, first stitch, and this is the same place as we just joined, we're going to form a corner. And that is going to be consisting of two 
double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next eight stitches. And I'm also going to stop to verify that I have the correct number. And I do. Yay. <laughs> so now we are going to form another corner in the next stitch, which will be again two double crochets, a chain two, and two double crochets all worked in the same space. Just like that. And then I am going to again work one double crochet in each of the next eight stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So after working those eight stitches, and again, take the time to double check that you have the correct number because these foundation rounds are probably the most important that we are going to work in the entire project. In the next stitch, we form another corner, which again is two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. Then we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next eight stitches again. So we're basically doing this repeat all the way around until we have formed a square. But I'm going to go ahead and just work this entire uh, round with you just so it is clear and there are no doubts as to what you need to do. Okay, I think that is eight stitches. Let me go ahead and verify. Yes, it is eight. And then in the next stitch, again, a corner, which is two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. And across the last edge, you should have eight stitches left. So we're going to work one double crochet in each of those remaining eight stitches. Okay, so that's four, five, six, seven, and eight. It's always nice when the math works. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you should have. It might be a little bit wavy. Don't worry about that right now. This will all work out as we progress. Okay, so after that, we are going to slip stitch our way to the chain two corner, just like that. And we are going to start the next round in this same corner. So what we're going to do, we're going to chain two and work another corner, two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets in that corner space. And then now we're going to work one double crochet in each stitch across. Now be careful that you don't skip the very first stitch. It's easy for the double crochets to cover up that stitch. Don't ignore that one. Make sure we begin with that one. So we're going to work double crochets in each stitch across. And let me go ahead and sum up what we're going to do when we get to the chain two corner. We're going to work a corner like we've been doing. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and then again one double crochet in each stitch across. So go ahead and work that all the way around. Now I'm finishing up the round and I have come to the place where there is the chain two space. So I just want you to be careful not to add an additional stitch in here. I'm going to go over to the 
um, double crochet here. Now it's going to be a little bit chunkier, thicker here because we do have those slip stitches that we worked. Don't worry, just go ahead and crochet over that. And as you can see, it looks fine, just like the other stitches. And then join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And then we're going to slip stitch our way again to the chain two corner. Chain two, and then we form another corner. We still have not turned our work, just to let you know. Everything is still with the front side facing. So we work a two double crochets, chain two, and a two double crochets in that chain two corner. And now we're going to begin the arrow stitch. This is one of my favorite stitches, and I think you're really going to like the texture. We're going to wrap our hook two times to prepare to work a treble crochet. So we're going to skip three stitches, one, two, three, and we're going to work a treble crochet in that next stitch. Now we're going to work behind this treble and we're going to work in these stitches that we just skipped and we can just pull that treble down in front like that and revealing those those stitches. Now the first one is is way over here. Remember I said sometimes these stitches tend to cover it so make sure we do not forget that very first stitch or your stitch count will be off. So we're going to double crochet in each of those three stitches that we skipped. Just like that. So after completing that first arrow stitch, let's go ahead and do another. Skip the next three stitches and then treble crochet in that next stitch. And now working behind this stitch, we're going to double crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped. And we're going to do this two more times going across. Skip the next three stitches, treble crochet in that next stitch, working behind that stitch. We're going to work double crochets in those three stitches that we just skipped. I think you'll find this is one of the easiest uh, cable style stitches there is, and it's also, I think, one of the more beautiful ones just to prove that cables do not have to be difficult. All right, so we're gonna skip the next three stitches. One, two, three, treble in that next stitch. And then working behind that treble, we work one double crochet in each of those three stitches that we just skipped. Once we get to the corner, we work our two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets to fill that corner space. So let's take a look at what we've just done. Okay, so you can see we have four arrows begun across the side, and you will have four arrows across each side and the two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in each chain two corner. So go ahead and work that all the way around. At the end of this round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. This is after five rounds. And again, please don't be worried about this curling up on you. This is far from finished, I promise you. And there's always the option of blocking your work, which adds a nice added shape to it. All right, so now we're on to round number six. And round number six is going to be round two of the arrow stitch. So we're gonna slip stitch to the corner. And this is the first time in the project that we're actually going to turn to have the back side facing us. And we're going to chain two and we are going to work the um, round two of the arrow stitch. Now, first of all, we need to double crochet in the first two stitches that were those corner stitches. Okay, now 
we're going to skip the next three stitches and you can see a nice grouping of three here and then we're going to treble crochet in that next stitch which is also the same top of the treble crochet from the previous round after we do that working in front of this stitch we're going to double crochet in those three stitches well, let me try that again in the three stitches that we skipped this might be a little bit tricky just be sure you get those loops correctly okay and that's what we're going to do all the way across I'll work a couple of these with you skip the next three again you see them all clustered together treble crochet in that next stitch which is and you can always flip to verify that that is the treble crochet from the previous round if you don't get it in that stitch exactly it is not going to look like an arrow then we double crochet in these three stitches as we work in front of the treble crochet remember this is the back side facing us I'm working gonna work this with you one more time and then I'll show you the front side facing so again we skip the next three stitches treble crochet and that next stitch working in front of that treble we double crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped and what we'll do is we'll work this across one more time you know what I'm going to just finish the row with you skip the next three treble crochet and the next stitch and then again working those double crochets work in front of that treble crochet And then we get to the chain two corner. First, we work a double crochet in those extra two double crochets that were the corner from the previous round. And then we get to the chain two corner. We work two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets. And then we're going to work a double crochet in those first two stitches on the next side and on every side and then we begin repeating the arrow well let's go ahead and take a look at how this arrow stitch looks after two rounds isn't that beautiful and it, again it's a very easy very doable uh, cabling style stitch and I dare say even for a confident beginner okay so go ahead and finish this all the way around and I will show you the join at the end as we finish we are going to work the corner which again is the two double crochets chain two and two more double crochets worked in that chain two space and then we join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round let's go ahead and turn at this point let's take a look at what we have I hope you're enjoying this texture as much as I am okay so we have turned so that we can begin the next round the next round is let's see round seven let's go ahead and chain one and we've gone ahead and turned let's go ahead and slip stitch our way to the chain two corner very important as we do that we're going to chain two and again work that two double crochet chain two and two double crochets in that chain two corner and the next three rounds are going to be very easy we simply work a double crochet in each stitch across the sides and when we get to the chain two corner you know what to do two double crochets chain two two double crochets so go ahead and work all the way around and I will show you the join at the end 
As we come around to the end of this round, don't forget that this is a turning chain and do not work it as a stitch or you will be adding to your stitch count. So I'm going to go ahead and work the last two stitches. Again, it's going to be over some bulky um, slip stitches, but it's okay. This will not be a problem. And then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch. Now we're going to work two more rounds of the double crochet and we're not going to need to turn to do this. If you do turn, it's going to change the way we join at the corner. So we slip stitch to the corner and we're just going to work two more rounds just like this, working the double crochets in each stitch. And again, we start with a corner. I'm just going to start you off on this and send you off to do two more rounds. So we have two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets worked in that corner. And again, don't forget that very first stitch. So go ahead and work two more rounds of just the double crochets and do not turn at the end of these rounds. This is what you should have after completing nine rounds. Okay, I've already joined and I've slip stitched to the chain two. So now we are ready to begin round 10, which is going to begin the Celtic weave stitches. So we're gonna go ahead and chain two and you know the drill. We're going to work that corner with two double crochets, chain two and two more double crochets. Now this is probably my all time favorite stitch. It's not nearly as easy as the arrow stitch, but I think if you just watch what I do, if you've never done this before, watch a couple of rounds first before trying this, just so that you won't be totally frustrated if, again, if you're a total beginner to this stitch. We're gonna wrap our hook because we're gonna be working a lot of front post treble crochets. Skip the next two stitches. We're gonna front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of those two stitches, we're gonna front post treble crochet in the two stitches we skipped. The first stitch here, and then the next stitch. And for those of you who've never seen a post stitch, the only thing that's different is instead of working in through the top loops, we wrap the hook around the body of the stitch. So this is going to be a repeat across the side to the next corner. Skip two stitches, working our, wrapping our hook around the body, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped, starting with the one that's furthest away, or the first one that we skipped, and then the second one that we skipped. And again, these are treble crochets. Let's do this again. Skip the next two stitches, and front post treble in the next two stitches. I will put an additional stitch video or I probably will put a listing of stitch videos in the video description below should you need extra viewing on these stitches. So working in front of those two stitches we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. So go ahead and work this across to the corner and I'll show you how to proceed from the corner. I want to show you the last four stitches as you work across to the corner. Skip two, front post treble in the last two stitches on this side. Working in front of those two stitches, we front post treble in those two skip stitches. And you should not have any extra stitches left. Okay, and then we're going to work the corner with two double crochets. Make sure you revert back to double crochets for this and not trebles. Chain two and two more 
double crochets and let's go ahead and start the next side with a skip two and treble crochet in the next two stitches and then working in front of those two stitches we're going to treble crochet in the two stitches that we just skipped okay so we've made that corner turn so let's go ahead and just take a look at how this is coming out all right, so go ahead and finish this all the way around and I'll show you the join and how to work row two of the Celtic weave. At the end of the round, we join with a slip stitch to that very first stitch of the round. And just as a reminder, I did not work around this chain. So I worked around these two stitches and then these two, avoiding that chain two. So don't get that confused as a stitch and as you can see it is well hidden within the work all right so now we're going to slip stitch to the corner and we are going to turn very important that we turn to work row two of the celtic wave we start with a chain two and do notice that we are not forming the corner we will do that at the end of the row whenever the back side of the work is facing and that should only be when you're working round two of the Celtic weave and round two of the arrow stitch you will form the corner at the end okay so we are going to begin we're going to skip the first two stitches and again that is a chain we're not going to work in that and we're going to back post treble crochet over those two stitches and now working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side we're going to work a back post treble around those two stitches that we just skipped let me try that one again so I'm going to show you how I can come around the back this way to work that first stitch might be a little bit tricky on this corner but it's very doable and then the next stitch which is right here all right so now that we've got that started we skip the next two stitches and then we back post around the next two and these two are going to be on the surface they're not going to be hidden Again, this is the part where it might be good to watch this just a bit before attempting it so that you understand what you're doing. Now the next, after we've finished these two, we're gonna work in front of these as seen from the front side, and we're gonna back post treble around this stitch and this stitch. And this is where it's good to get your fingers involved. The nerve endings in your thumbkin and tall man finger here will come in very handy. And so we're gonna work and working in front of those stitches as seen from the front side. I'm going to bring our hook around to do that stitch. And then the next stitch. I know this is a bit tricky, so do take your time in learning it. Mistakes are allowed as you learn, so please give yourself grace in making some of these mistakes as you practice this stitch. And in fact, you may want to just practice on a separate swatch until you understand it better. Okay, skip the next two stitches and back post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these as seen from the front side, let's go ahead. We're going to back post treble in this stitch and then this stitch. Bring our hook around the back. And we're going to do that one more time. Okay, like that. Let me show this to you one more time. Skip the next two stitches. Back post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these as seen from the front side, we're going to back post treble around this and then this stitch. 
make sure these last stitches that you're working now are on top of the previous stitches. Okay, let's go ahead and stop. Now I'm going to show you this is what it looks like from the back side, which doesn't look like a whole lot. And this is the front side, and that looks much richer in texture, much nicer. So go ahead and work this to the corner, and I will show you what to do once you get to the corner. As we approach the corner, we have two stitches left in the Celtic weave, and then two additional stitches. So we're going to skip these two stitches, just like we've been doing back post treble in the next two stitches and just like we've been doing working in front of these stitches as seen from the front side we're going to back post treble in those two stitches that are left there along the side let's get that escapey strand back on the hook and let's continue. All right, and that brings us to the corner, and you know what to do. Two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. And I'm going to show you how to start this side one more time, just so there is no doubt. Skip the next two stitches back post treble and the next two stitches and then working in front of these as seen from the front side we're going to incorporate these two additional stitches into our work now for those of you who are familiar with working the Celtic weave in straight rows you'll know that this is slightly different and the reason is we are adding we are adding Celtic weave stitches as the corners grow. Okay, so that's we're just making the most use of all the stitches to give this blanket as much texture as possible. So go ahead and finish this all the way around, and I will show you the final join. At the end of this round, it's time for us to work the corner, those two double crochets chain two and two more double crochets and then we join with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round which was that very first Celtic weave that we worked okay so let's go ahead and turn and this is after the second round of the Celtic weave I hope you are really enjoying this this is really pretty and um, so now we're ready to work one more round of the Celtic weave. And so to begin this round, we're going to chain one and then we're going to slip stitch to the corner. And since we have the front side facing, we will work the corner first with those two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets okay now we're going to work round one again of the Celtic weave and it's worked the same way except this time it's going to be easier to see where to work these I believe we skip the first two stitches front post treble and the next two stitches and now working in front of those two stitches we're going to work in those two stitches that we skipped and we're going to make these part of the Celtic weave as well. And I will go ahead and work one more of these with you. Skip the next two stitches and these are kind of hiding back here and then we work these next two stitches. These are the stitches that are on the surface already. And working in front of those, we're going to work these two stitches that we skipped. And again, use your finger and thumb to find these two stitches and don't forget them. You will be short stitches and it won't look right if you do. So again, we're front post troubling around those two stitches. Let me do that one more time. 
skip the next two stitches. These are the two that are hiding. Front post treble and the two stitches that are on the surface. And then working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Just like that. So go ahead and work this all the way around. And just as a reminder, when you get to the last stitches, you front post treble in these two and then you front post treble in these two that are hiding here, and then work your corner two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. At the end of round 12, which is also round one again of the Celtic weave, we're going to join with a slip stitch. And then let go, let's go ahead and slip stitch our way to the corner and let's take a look at this beautiful stitch. So this is what you should have at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and start on a repeat of the double crochet rounds. We're going to chain two and just like we've done before, two double crochets, chain two and two more double crochets in the chain two corner. Notice that I did not turn at the end of that Celtic weave round as we transition to the double crochets. Now for the double crochet rounds, we're just going to work one double crochet in each stitch, just like we did following the arrow stitch rounds. So work one double crochet, and you can see I'm just working in the top of those trebles from the previous rounds. Okay, so let me give you some directions for how to go from here. So we're going to work rounds 13, 14, and 15 with just the double crochets. And again, do not turn at the end of these rounds. After we finish rounds 13, 14, and 15, for round 16 onward, what we will do is we are going to repeat rounds 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So rounds 5 through 15 will be the repeat as the blanket grows. And you can make this blanket as large or as small as you wish by the number of repeats. Now, if you don't want a full repeat, you can always stop after the you know, any of these sections, um, quite honestly. So go ahead and work the repeats again, and that would include the arrow, two rows of the arrow, three rows of double crochet, three rows of Celtic weave, followed by three rows of double crochet. Repeat that until the blanket is the size that you wish, and then I will show you how to work the final trim round. I've just completed a total of 28 rounds and let me show you what I have. And I just really, really enjoyed the colors as this unfolded. And I will show you a much better overall photo of this in just a second. So let me give you some specifics on what I did. I gave you the assignment to repeat rounds five through 15 which is the arrows, the double crochet, the Celtic weave, more double crochet. So I only did one complete repeat of that. So that took me through round 26. And then I added two more rounds. I repeated rounds five and six for another set of arrows on the outside. So now we're about to start round 29, which is the eyelet. But let me just, just be clear that if you would like this to be bigger, by all means, make it bigger. You can just continue the pattern with the rounds. If you want this to be smaller, just work fewer rounds. It's as simple as that. Some good stopping points would be after the arrow rounds or after the three rounds, or however many rounds you want to work of the double crochet. 
So now we're going to begin the eyelet round and I've gone ahead and slip stitched to my corner. Let's go ahead and chain one. We're going to work two eyelets in the chain two corners. I'll demonstrate it here. Just know that when you get to the other three chain two corners, go ahead and do the same thing by working two of these. And we do this by working a single crochet, chain three, and then double crochet. Okay, that's one. Let's do that again in the same chain two space. Single crochet, chain three, and then a double crochet. Okay, and working in the very next stitch, we're going to work a single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. Now this is where it's different going across. We're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then we're going to work an eyelet in the next stitch. Single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. So let's pause and take a look at this for a minute. Okay, let's continue. Skip two, and again, single crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. Skip two, chain three, and a double crochet. Skip two, and so you get the idea. So let's go ahead and just take a look again. And you see how this should be looking nice and even. If you find that it's very wavy, all you need to do is change the size of your hook down one size. Um, but I think you should not need to do that. So go ahead and work this all the way around. So I've worked this eyelet all the way around. Skip the next two stitches. We're going to work it right here. And I'm going to chain three do another eyelet right here and this is going to make sure that all three of these match. Now I'm going to also connect it right down here with a slip stitch and then I'm going to give it a chain and pull it nice and tightly and let's go ahead and trim a nice long piece. And all I need to do now is hide a couple of loose strands and then I will be complete. So let me go ahead and I'll show you a couple of beautiful pictures of this right here. Hope you enjoyed making the Abigail baby blanket with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.